had several people ask how I did this little gradient effect in the background of the new Barfly dashboard. It's actually just a bit of an optical illusion and it's pretty easy to pull off. So in today's video, I thought I'd show you how we can replicate this effect using Figma. If you're interested, maybe we could do a follow-up video where I actually show you how I built this all out. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. Here inside Figma, we're looking at just a single section of a website with a dark background. We've got a bit of content here and then three cards, which you can see all listed over here in the layers panel. So the first thing we need to do is set up the pattern that's gonna appear in our background. Now, if we go back and look at that bar fly design, you can see there's a bit of a grid pattern, but I think we'll do something different today just to show you that you can do all kinds of different things with this. So I'm gonna zoom out here and I'm gonna get my line tool to draw a diagonal line. Now I need this line to be tall enough that it's taller than my section here. So I'm just gonna stick it over the side and make sure we have a little bit of extra wiggle room. I'm also gonna be duplicating this line. So it's kind of a pattern of these diagonal lines and I need to make sure that it's also wide enough. So I'm gonna align this bottom right hand corner to the left side of my section. We're gonna duplicate that by holding Option, Control and Shift and then I'm just gonna press Command D and hold that down in order to just keep replicating that duplication there. So once it's plenty big enough and bigger than my section, I'll just grab all of these at once and press Command G to contain them all inside of a group. Now, just to make it easy to see here, I'm gonna turn these to bright red and then I'm gonna drop them inside of my section here. Because I dropped those inside the frame and I have this frame set to clip content, you can see it's just clipping off anything that's overflowing those bounds. Now we need to move this pattern back. I'm gonna go ahead and rename it here. We'll call it pattern. And I'm gonna press command and the open bracket just to send it to the back of my design here. So now it's all the way in the back. Now the next thing we need is some kind of shape for this gradient or blur. Now, when I did this originally, I just used the pen tool down here to draw a random shape. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can always use something like this blob maker. We'll just grab a random shape here. It honestly really doesn't matter at all. And we'll go ahead and download that. Back inside Figma, I'll go ahead and import that blob image. We'll just put it down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag that out of the frame it comes in and get rid of that frame. Now over here, this is just labeled vector. I'm gonna call this blob and then we can drag it and get it into position of how we want it to look on this website. I think I'm gonna turn it kind of sideways like this to frame in the corner a bit and something like that is gonna work perfectly. Now this came in as pink and I want it to match this green accent in this design. So I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool here just to get that same green color. Now to give it that gradient looking effect, I'm gonna go in here over to the effects and go in and choose a layer blur. And inside the options for that, I'm gonna hold down shift and the up arrow on my keyboard just to really blur this shape out so it's not as distinctive here. So something like this, it seems like it will work pretty good at least for a starting place. Now it's gonna be important the order we put all of these things in. So I'm gonna drag this blob down here back behind my pattern. So now you can see the pattern is overlaying on top of this blob, which is exactly what we want. Now to give it that effect where we only see the pattern on top of the blob, all we have to do is grab our pattern here. So I'll select it from our layers panel. And instead of this stroke being this red color, I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool and just make sure it's the same color as my background here. So now this pattern is still overlaying the entire section, but the only place we're seeing it is where this green blob is because it blends in perfectly with the background color everywhere else. Now this effect is still a little bit strong for my taste. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the blob tool here and we're gonna go over into this fill colors opacity. I'm gonna hold down the shift and press the down arrow just to bring down that opacity to something that's a little bit more subtle. Something like 30% might work well here. Now this pattern is still the full color of my background here, but it's actually nice if you can grab that pattern and bring its opacity down too. I'll bring it down to something maybe like 40% here. And that introduces a little bit of that green color into the dark stripes, which makes it blend in a little bit nicer. If I went back to 100% here, you can see it's pretty strong, but if we back that down to something like 40%, it's a little bit more subtle but because it's the same color as the background, as soon as we get outside of that blob, it just kind of fades and disappears. And right now these cards have a solid black background, but we can actually give this even a cooler effect if we go in here and go into our fill for this background and we just drop this opacity down. So I'm gonna drop it down to maybe something like 60% here where we can start seeing that green kind of show through the card. Now, if we go into our effects 
and change this to background blur. We can go in here and change the blur a little bit more just to make this give it more of that glass morphism effect where you can kind of still see the texture back there, but you can tell that this is somewhat opaque standing on top of it. And just like that, with just a few simple tricks that I know anybody can do inside Figma, we can really make this section look a whole lot better. If we go back to where we started, I can turn off both of these layers here. This is a fine section, but it's a little bit boring. By adding the pattern and the blob, we create a little bit more visual interest here. And this is obviously a motif you can carry out throughout the entire website using this in different places. What I love about this effect is it looks a whole lot more complicated than it is in reality. As long as you think about this in a 3D space where you know which things need to be in front of the others, it's pretty simple to pull off and it's so infinitely customizable that I bet you could come up with thousands of different layouts using this trick. Like I said, if you'd like to see how I actually built this out, then let me know down in the comments and maybe I can do a follow-up video showing you how to build this exact section out inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch that follow-up video, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.